Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. We have our one of our favorite guests, Dr. Liz Lister, today. And, of course, as always, one of my favorite partners, John Coleman. Well, thank you, Art. And Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise. Thank you. Uh, in the past, Dr. Liz, we've talked about uh, sleep. Um, sometimes we don't get enough. Sometimes we get um, Art and I both being males of a certain age, uh, have our sleep interrupted by that wonderful prostate gland that we all have come to love. Um, but sleep does change as you get older. You know, they, I've read once that they say, uh, as you get older, you don't need as much sleep. Now, I wish I thought that were true. I don't think it is true. But is it technically, scientifically accurate to say that we, we don't need as much? Or is it that we just sleep less? I love that question. That's a great way to start us off, John. I agree with you. The science shows that as we get older, we do sleep less. I don't necessarily think that means we need less sleep. Now, let's just talk about, you know, for a second, children that are growing, teenagers that are growing, fine. Maybe they need extra sleep. But then I'm more with you that as we get older, we actually do sleep less, but I'm not sure that we necessarily need less sleep. Well, well, I, I, well, 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 well. <laughs> so this is this is your the first real eye opener, and you've had some eye openers with us. Okay, I get less sleep because of my beloved prostate, as John has referred to. Um, but uh, I'm I used to be able to close my eyes at night, get eight hours mm -hmm. of sleep, wake up totally refreshed. And I have to admit now that now that I'm getting less sleep, I'm not as probably not as refreshed. Uh, so uh, please further expound on what you're talking about. Well, you know me, I'm a hormone expert. And there are hormonal changes that happen as we get older that contribute to less deep sleep. We make less growth hormone. We also make less melatonin as we get older. These are in women, less progesterone after menopause and no longer ovulating, all pretty much no progesterone. Progesterone helps with sleep. So all of these hormones help with sleep. And then it's a chicken and egg problem, especially with growth hormone. We make growth hormone primarily while we sleep. And so if it's disrupted, we're making less growth hormone and then we're sleeping less. So all of these changes the lack of melatonin leads to the fragmented, disrupted sleep that some of us experience. The lack of growth hormone leads to less deep sleep. And that's that restorative sleep that you were just talking about that helps you wake up in the morning, ah, you feel refreshed. Okay. Yeah. The, the, Good go, John. I, I was just going to say the length of the sleep in between wake ups to go to the bathroom. If I can get three or four hours, that's great. If I only get one or two hours, it's like I didn't even take a good nap. Well, you know what? So I'm right, gonna, absolutely. So yeah. I'm going to ask Dr. Wonder Woman, and you are, you, quite frankly, I like you better than the movies, okay? Because you're real. Ooh. How how can we how can we uh, as older people? get maybe more of that refreshing sleep or the techniques that we can use or, or pills or, or hormone kind of things we can do? Right, absolutely. That's super important. So first of all, there's always a hormone replenishment, which as you both know, I'm a big fan of. It can be done safely and there's lots to talk about. Of course, that's working with your doctor on that. There are, uh, melatonin is fine. Most melatonin supplements are safe. I. I'm not aware of anybody overdosing with melatonin. I think the worst thing that can happen is it'll work too well and you'll feel too sleepy. So I think it's fine. Uh, this is after making sure that you don't have an actual sleep disorder. That's important. And one more comment on sleep as we get older. And then I want us to talk about sleep hygiene because that's a lot of tips 
for our listeners to follow that will help. And that is that you might need to, if you're finding yourself having more difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, there's other factors to evaluate. How's your mood? How's your stress level? What other medications are you taking that could be disrupting your sleep? Are you having pain? Are you going through the menopause transition? Are you having hot flashes or night sweats? There's some really straightforward situations that can be addressed that can significantly help your sleep. Good, okay. good advice. Good yeah. advice. Now about health. Is that what you said? Healthy sleep, sleep hygiene. Yes. Sleep hygiene. That's the term that we doctors use. It's kind of a strange term, but that is the phrase that we use. And a lot of people already know this. Avoiding caffeine after, say, lunchtime. Uh, avoiding alcohol. Alcohol sedates the brain at first, but then as the alcohol level is declining, it actually stimulates the brain. So that can be disruptive of sleep. Exercise seems to help keeping set hours, keeping a consistent schedule, and of course, turning off our computer screens. Everyone says an hour before bedtime, that's a good idea. If you like to read on your Kindle like I do, you want to have it set to the dark background so that it's not stimulating your brain right before you're going to try to fall off to sleep and get a good night's rest. So staying up late and watching uh, late night television in bed is not really a good idea. <laughs> you know, considering how much I enjoy doing that, it depends on how you're feeling overall. If you're keeping a consistent schedule and that is part of your schedule and you sleep well and wake up refreshed, enjoy. Yeah. But if not, well, it, it make does... some adjustments. It does kind of come down to what works for you. You have to experiment to find out what your body responds to and what your lifestyle will permit, and that kind of thing, right? Exactly. Yep, I agree with that. I'm a little surprised that you haven't uh, uh, spoken about, let's say, uh, John and I are business partners. Um, uh, would you recommend that maybe uh, before I get ready to nod off, I call John and ask him to sing me a lullaby? I well, think. as long as John's not trying to fall off to sleep, but the answer is yes. So, mm. I, you know, there's about a zillion apps right now that are calming and meditative. That's very helpful. Really? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There, are, there's, there's an app for that. There's a lot of apps for that. However, I like to encourage people to use those initially and then try to wean yourself off of those. Any kind of, you know, there's a reason that people count sheep. It's dull. It's boring. It's repetitive. And you can say it to yourself. I recommend that as a technique to help. I call that brain training for sleep. I've written about that. That's what I call that. You there know, we go. That, that, what, a, what a great hint. I have an accounting degree. And I never thought to, to use it to count sheep. <laughs> uh, good idea. I'm going to try that tonight. You can do it with yeah. a slide ruler too, Art. A slide roll? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, but, the, but, but like I say, the Christmas story, be careful you don't poke your uh, eye out. Yeah. Right. Now, I can see we're winding up here. But before we go, one last question. This may be kind of dumb. How about warm milk, a cup of warm milk before bedtime? Does yes. that do anything? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, really, any kind of warm beverage. So kind of calming down the body. That's also part of sleep hygiene is having the room be cool and quiet, having the bed only be for sex and sleep. That's it. That's that's what's most recommended. So too much of the video watching and the reading and that sort of thing, it, it depends. If it's calming and soothing and helps you fall off to sleep, great. But sometimes uh, I, I have to be very careful what I'm watching right before I fall off to sleep, make sure it's not too animated and definitely not violent or anything like that has to be yeah. calming and helpful to the whole process. That's what we mean when we talk about sleep hygiene. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I, I'm going to, uh, there's at least one of those things that I'm going to do tonight. And so John, please get out mother goose. And, <laughs> and I'll call uh, you later, please. About, <laughs> about seven 30. I'm going to try to get a long night's sleep. 
<laughs> All right. Now we actually we should end this segment with Art singing Brahms lullaby, but we'll skip that. But only if <laughs> but only if we need people to stay awake all day. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Liz, thank you so much. This has been very helpful, really. Although I don't think it's gonna help me sleep, it's gonna help me change my sleep habits. Very like, good. Like awesome. turn like turn off your phone before I call you for the lullaby. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dr. Liz. We'll see you soon. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.